Uh, right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this model and we're going to make what's called a turntable animation, which is just your camera's going to spin around it as basically as many degrees as you want it to do. Okay, and then you can you can render it out. So a lot a lot of people show reads what you'll see is a turntable animation. Dead simple to set up. Maya actually Maya actually does all the hard work for you. Um, all you have to do then is hit render. Okay, so it's dead simple. Um, so first thing to do is select your model. So I'm just going to select this one. Um, and I'm just going to I'm going to quickly combine it just because I haven't already. All right, so that's all on model now. So make sure you're in the animation set of menus. Okay, now mine is a bit kind of cut off because I'm on a projector. But what we're looking for is this animate menu. So you line it up, you line up the view that you want. And nice thing to do is always check what it's going to look like if you render it. Okay, so I haven't put in any lights or anything yet. So this is just going to default what it's going to kind of going to look like. So that's all right. So what we'll do in your final turntables, we'll put on some nice lighting and we'll turn on some shadows and stuff like that. So I'll just tweak that a wee bit. So maybe it's around there. Okay. All right. So all you do is click animate in your menu, and down the bottom here you've got turntable is one of the options. Now always use the options for it. Pop up. So it's going to ask you right how many frames do you want it to do. Um, so do you want it to be 240 frames, which would be 10 seconds, 480 would be 20 seconds, and then what direction do you want to go in? So clockwise will be going to my right, and the clockwise will be going to the left. So all you do is say, right, 240 is fine, just hit turntable. But don't freak out if you try and move, and it won't let you. So what's happened here is Maya's made you another camera called turntable camera one. It's a bit hard to see. But basically, it's made another camera for you, so you don't have to worry if you've got other animation going on in the scene, it doesn't matter. So if I hit play now, that's it. Okay, so it looks, the thing is, it instantly looks impressive, and it takes like five, 10 seconds to do. All right, so dead simple. Maya does all the hard work for you, so you can actually put that on. It's nice if you can have that on there, because you can put it on a loop and stuff. So when we do open evenings, um, we normally turntable a couple of the best models from our students, go to a school and we put this on the MacBook and it's instantly kind of impressive looking. Um, so that's it. that's your camera setup. Okay, so if you want to change back to your normal camera, panels, perspective, you notice now that's another camera that's been added to the scene. So what we need to do now, and I don't know if you guys have done this before, is uh, we're going to set up a render settings. So, little clapper board with the two little dots beside it. So if we click on that, it brings you a big list of options. So the very first one is uh, what render layer you're doing. So later on, you might find that if you're doing a big visual effects shot, you might use a layer for rendering the shadows and a layer for rendering the reflections and stuff. So if you see like a Pixar film or something from Industrial Light and Magic, there might be like five or 10 different layers all put together. But with us, we don't need that much. They do it to basically save render time and stuff. We're gonna leave it on master layer. The render using is what Maya's gonna try and render it with. So I'm gonna leave it on software for the time being. You guys might end up rendering a thing called mental ray. That's basically what figures out where the shadows are and stuff like that. The main thing I'm looking at down here is frame slash animation set. Okay, so you always gotta check this. This will tell you up the top where it's going to render date. So it tells me where it's going to save it, and it tells me the file name. So at the minute, it's only going to save one file, which is crap. I need 240 of them. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this. I'm going to change it to any one of these other ones. So all this here is is just what way it's going to name the file. So name dot hash. The hash stands for the number. Dot ext stands for the extension. Okay. So this means it's going to name it barn dot one dot iff and then barn dot two dot iff and then barn dot three dot iff so if you work for a company you need to be careful what way you save them for yourself i mean we can just do it i guess okay so it gives me an example now it's saying right i'm rendering from barn one the whole way to barn 10. okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna change this um and just for handiness sake because it's one that we all know we'll save it as a jpeg so start frame is one, end frame needs to be 240. 
Oh, sometimes it's a bit, for some reason this is a bit dodgy. If you change it and then you go back and you change it. All right, so 240. Now, this is where everyone messes up. Okay, so I still do this, where I hit render and I go away for like two hours, I come back and it's rendered like a camera that's not moving or it's literally rendered a camera looking at a blank wall for like 240 frames and everyone does it so don't like don't feel like crap if you mess it up and it goes wrong basically what it's saying is saying right which one of these cameras do you want to use okay so i'm going to bend the top one because my perspective camera is just sitting still it's not going to do anything that's the one that i model with so i'm going to give that a road so i'm going to render using turntable camera one which is spot on that's exactly what i want um, and then under presets you can choose what size what size you're going to do so when you guys make a show reel, you're probably going to be using a nice big file format, so like maybe 720 or 1080. Um, but just for today's, I'm just going to be a bit lazy and save it as a 640, so that's pretty small, okay? Um, and that's fine. All right, so that's everything set up. You can just double check it at the top. So it's going to go from barn1.jpg the whole way up to barn240.jpg, and it's going to use that file size. So all you do is hit close. All right, so that just sits in the background and until we're ready to use it. All right, so whenever we're ready to render, change your, your mode from animation to rendering, okay? And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna do a thing called a batch render. So anything you deal with a batch, um, you deal with a big chunk of files. So if we go render and then batch render, what it's gonna do now is it's gonna go through my files one at a time is going to make 240 small images back to back. So down the bottom here, this will always update you on know, what's happening. Okay, so if you're ever not sure of what's going on, this here update. Down here you've got a thing called your batch render monitor. That'll start ticking up in numbers. So like a one will appear there and then it'll turn into a two and then a three and then a four. So the best thing to do when you're working with animation is Figure out how long it takes to render one frame and then multiply it by the number you need. So say it takes one minute to render one frame. If we've got 240 frames, it's going to take 240 minutes. Divide that by 60, it's going to take four hours. Okay, so that's how you kind of work out. So you notice mine's going up actually pretty quick. Um, if you ever want to see a, a longer view of that, if you just click on your script editor, um, that lists it out, okay? So it's going through every frame and it's just saving it out as an image, okay, over and over again. Right, so that's, your batch render's finished. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna grab those files and turn them into a final video. So the handiest way to do is if you click render, uh, you've got an option then called show batch render. Okay, so click on that. So it opens up this kind of program that runs inside Maya called F-Check. Okay, so you see it like bouncing on my taskbar at the bottom. It's like two little film reads put together. So by default, what F-Check will do is it'll try and open up one of the files that was just rendered, okay? So it opens up like the last frame. So what we want to do is we want to tell F-Check to open up all 240, okay? So I'll just click File. I'm going to go to Open Sequence. So sequence means if we click on number one, it'll keep going until it finds the last number. So by default, mines are in this awkward folder, so it's Maya Projects, Default, and then Images. So yours might be um, 3D Modeling, um, Images. Okay, so that might be the name of your project folder. So all I do is click on the first one, and just hit Open. And this can get a wee bit slow sometimes, because it's got to open up 240 files, and it's got to put them in the right order. So if you just wait, it should load up. There we go. Right. So that's the video. Okay, so it's taken our 240 frames and stuck them all together. All right. So what we're going to do now is we want to get this out of Maya because it's no good. It's just sitting in here. So all I do is click File and Save as Movie. And you choose basically where you want to save it. So I'm going to go to the desktop. I'm going to call it Barn uh, Turntable. Click Save. You can just leave it on no transformations for the time being. So use transformation saves under the video data. Any other 
uh, that'll be last, so we'll just go right, that'll do. So now, on our desktop is Barn, yep. No, oh, it's still saving it. I appear to have crashed it. There we go, right, so it's ready now. Right. And that's ready then, you can stick it up on a YouTube channel, you can put it in uh, a showreel, whatever you need to do. All right, so it works the same for any animation. You always set up your render settings, uh, and then you set it to batch export, and then you bring it together. Okay, so if you've got any models that you want to put in the showreel, uh, we'll get started.